Hey guys, there's the railroad. This is Samuel Tayik. We are going to the New Mexico Film Museum over there. So, just doing some documentary on bees. So, I hope you like this. If you don't, whatever. I'm gonna do it anyway. So, ha. Later. We just got done watching the one hour documentary on the bees. Apparently, bees make up one third of all our food, and if they vanish, we're gonna have a big crisis on our hands. They make fruits, vegetables, all kinds of crap. Yeah. And I'm Paul Cooley. I used to be a high school teacher, so if I run on, just stop me. But I, uh, I, uh, I started beekeeping about three years ago. I just wanted to have one hive in my backyard. And they started swarming right away. So my problem has been too many bees rather than disappearing bees. I, right now I have 12 hives throughout Santa Fe in, in three different yards. I use top bar beehives, which is what Talon uses too. Have you got the bees you captured in the top bar? Yeah. So you'll see a top bar hive. This is a top bar. And uh, with top bar beekeeping, you just allow the bees to build comb naturally. It's, I have a long line or four feet long, and they just fill up the box, and they usually put the honey in the back, and you brush the bees off and, and harvest the honey. So I'll pass that around if people want to look at it. And I, I have a small business called Car Free Bees. Four years ago, we got rid of our car when our kids got to be, uh, they were two and four. When I was a high school teacher, all my kids said that the thing they really disliked about adults was the hypocrisy. And I didn't want to be a parent that said, oh, cars are bad for the environment while well, I still have my sob sitting out in the driveway. So I do everything by bicycle. I haul, I haul bee hives around on a trailer. It's kind of like the miniature version of, of what the people were doing on the, in the movie. Okay. My name is Monique Ortega, and I have been beekeeping for about two years. Um, I'm having a lot of problems with my bees. I've had, uh, since the first year that I got them, I've had to do stuff that I had no intention of doing because I was in, I was in jeopardy of losing them. Um, I reason I got started in beekeeping was for two reasons. I have two herniated discs in my neck. Has anybody ever heard of apotherapy? Apotherapy is when you get a bee and you sting yourself with it. Cause an adrenal reaction so it can help heal things. Um, I can totally credit my bees for my success in not having surgery uh, on the two herniated discs in my neck. And um, um, the, I am, I think due to the apotherapy, I'm at this point at, on the verge of becoming allergic to them. So, so that's part of it. Um, I brought a few things you guys could look at. This is an old, old um, frame. frame. <laughs> oh, what is it called? And um, it still has honeycomb on it. This is when I purchased my bees two years ago. This was in the new. This was one of the original, one of my original um, frames <laughs> from my bees. You take a nice whiff of this, you'll smell it. I'll pass it around so you guys can touch it and check it out. It's an old, old bar. I mean, bar, frame, same thing. Are there any bees in it? Right now? No, this I, I pulled those out whenever I, um, when I got my hives, I pulled out, I, I wanted to put everything new so that I could have everything at the same, because you're supposed to take out your, your, your things every four to seven years, depending on how cleanly you want it. So I wanted to, I didn't know how old those were, so I wanted to pull out all my original ones and put in brand new stuff. That is the old wooden frame. This is what I currently use in my hive, which is plastic. And they're a lot more durable. They're already got some wax on it. Actually, this even has some sugar water. This one was actually ready to go into the hive. You guys can check this out. These are a lot more durable, a lot less, um, a lot less chances of that thing there. The, the you have to piece them all together. It's pretty intricate work. So the brick once you take them apart, or yeah, or they're really hard to use and they're hard to repair, and it's like a whole an assembly line. That's why I went with the plastic ones. And my bees had no problems taking to them. Some people say, well, they took longer than what they say the other ones do, but there's a lot more pieces to the other ones. This is a feeder. 
This is something that you fill with sugar water and put it in there in place of one of the frames. <laughs> and um, you fill it up and the bees crawl in here. You can feel inside of it. They have like little grooves so the bees can climb down as low as the, the sugar water gets. And if you're gonna, there's tons of different ways to feed your bees. I do this method. Sometimes I take an external feeder just because I think it's the coolest thing which can cause robbing, but I like to get one of the little external. I didn't bring it because I couldn't find it. But um, feeders, and you see bees just all over. It's, it's an amazing thought. I would do that once in a while just to take pictures to take. And I couldn't find any pictures either. So I also brought a hat. So you guys, I never actually wore any, um, of the suits or any of that stuff that the beekeepers wore. I wore shorts and a t-shirt tank top and my hat. I didn't like getting stung in the face, so that's what this is. This is a hat and you just pull it over. It's a pretty cool thing. I'm sure you guys know how it works. This goes in the back. You guys are more than welcome to check it out. Just be gentle with it. I just brought lots of stuff for you guys to see. Can I um. How about this? Why don't you like get a population of, you know, healthy bees and get the flowers needed and try to seclude them to do, I don't know, how could they like do an experiment and see what makes some bees not affected by this virus and try to increase the population in those amount of bees. Well, that's something that they were, I, I thought that they were kind of saying about introducing the African honeybees genes, which seems, you know, fairly shaky in my <laughs> eyes. I don't kind know, of terrifying, actually. I don't know yeah. if you know, like, the African um, honeybee is super aggressive. So it looks like a normal honeybee, but, you know, smoking them, you know, wearing certain colors, you want to wear light colors when you go into a beehive. All those things don't really come into account. They get pissed off no matter what you do. Yeah, but what I meant is, like, we. it says that a bunch of their colonies are dying and only certain colonies are being affected by this. Why don't you get some of them that are not being affected by this and try to increase the population within those certain amount of bees and try to sell them off and increase more population of those bees who aren't affected by the virus already. In some ways that, that's what's already happened with the, the varroa mite, which, which wiped out a lot, of, a lot of the bee population a few years ago. They, they now find that a lot of the bees that survived that are more hygienic. They clean the mites off of the other bees in the colony so that varroa mites aren't as quite, quite the problem they, they were before. So I, I don't know if anybody is, is trying that right now. I'd like to think that, that the urban beekeepers are kind of part of that experiment. We're not really around agricultural land.